So basically what you're doing is ultrasound. It's simple. The other things like stress tests, the vast majority of stress tests uses a radioactive isotope, significant amounts of radiation. I'm not worried about the radiation associated with most stress tests. I'm more worried about people that are getting multiple angiograms because that starts to add up. But all of the other techniques do use radiation. Ultrasound's not a radiation, so it's totally safe. And because of that, we have tens of thousands of CIMTs done on kids that were born just recently born and we track their CIMT progression throughout their life because there is no radiation. Now, so what is it? It's a measurement of the intima and the media. So if you look at this, this is the carotid artery, the artery in the neck. This is the lining, the intima. You know, when I said they did an autopsy on Tim Russert and they said it, the inside of his coronary arteries looked like a teenager's face with a bad case of acne. What happens is you get this area inflamed. We take friendly fire our own immune system starts finding this LDL that piles up in here. And we can talk later about why the LDL piles up. Pardon me, I'm gonna take another bunny hole and talk about why that piles up. It's cardiovascular inflammation. It's inflammation of this lining of the artery wall. It's most often due to having too high a blood sugar, although a high blood insulin can do it as well. It's a mucus-like membrane. It's very much like the microscopic equivalent of the marshlands near the beach or you know we used to have a place at Kiowa the marshlands are where huge amount of biological activities go on and that's what happens here the cells drop off their waste through a glycan pardon the technical term don't need to, to remember it but it's a critical part of this it's a microglycan matrix proteoglycan matrix again ignore the term pardon me for using it but that provides the surface area for the cells to drop off waste materials and to pick up oxygen, energy, glucose, etc. Well, having too much glucose or too much insulin damages those fine, hairy cells and injures this intima layer. When it does, whatever level of LDL that you have in your bloodstream, that LDL tends to what we call transcytosis. Trans meaning passing through and cytosis meaning the cells. So the LDL tends to pass through these injured cells and it gets stuck here. So what we can do now is measure the distance between the media, the muscle layer of the artery wall, which gives it its structural support, and the intima, the real metabolic working area. Now, it's measurement of the area between the intima and media of the carotid arteries using B mode. B just stands for brightness, and it's a technology. There's A mode and B mode. A mode looks at differences between certain types of surfaces. B mode looks at brightness of particles to show what type of material we have. Measurements are taken from the intima media to say, okay, we've done those tens of thousands of CIMT measurements for boys and girls. And yes, boys come out of the womb with a little bit higher level of thickness here. And guess what? Boys have heart attacks earlier. We know that. In an ultrasound, sound waves are passing through the bodies all the time. They're harmless. Sound waves are concentrated through a transducer and the equipment to capture these waves is they bounce off the surface areas. In the brightness mode or B mode, the sound waves bounce off dense medium materials such as bone or calcium and send back a signal which appears as a bright dot. There are several landmark studies. What's interesting, and Alfredo and Jesus are wonderful docs in Mexico that are starting to work with us with our content. They got a lot of really good studies, especially the Eric study, the Rotterdam study, but they didn't talk about the number one study, and that's the Cafes de Cave study. Now, I talked with Ariana before this, and Ariana acknowledges that she's got some information on the Cafes de Cave study. If you have interest in the science, again, get the book. You can read about it. We cover it a lot. But the bottom line is, Eric study, which many people have heard of, as well as the vascular aging study, EVA, the Rotterdam study, Edinburgh study, Quopio, ischemic disease, cardiovascular health study, all saw the same thing. Increase in the amount of LDL, increase in that space between media and intima that we showed just a minute ago, that little dark area right there, as that increases, in other words, as it gets more and more filled with LDL, your risk for heart attack and stroke increases. Very 
Very simple, very clear, very reliable. Now, the study was performed 2020 by Willett. You know, Willett is the guy at Harvard that did a lot of dietary research. He actually did one on CIMT. He saw the same thing. And one of the other things that you began to see is, okay, so you see that, but then the next critical question in the research was, what if you start intervening? What if you can actually achieve a reduction in the CIMT progression? You don't often get a reversal. My most popular popular video, it's got about 2 million views now, is where I did actually receive a reversal. And if you're a statin hater, please close your ears for a second. I hate to admit it, you know, I've been a statin hater myself. Statins were a significant part. I made some other tune-ups as well, but I went from 73-year-old arteries in my mid-50s to mid-50-year-old arteries now on my CIMT, and I'm in the mid-60s. So I went from 20 years old, arteries 20 years older than my chronological age, to arteries that are 10 years younger. So this is all great. Now, why then would the insurance companies say, nope, we're gonna pay two to $15,000 for a stress test with radiology, with radioisotopes, radiation, but we won't pay 300 for one of these. Well, here's the major weakness, operator dependent image acquisition. And again, as I mentioned, Ariana has taken that time, done that work and trained with Todd. I will tell you, I respect that commitment a lot. As I started getting into this, I did my own attempt at learning with Todd's group. Todd was very supportive. He said, Ford, I know you can learn this. And the bottom line was, yeah, I could have, but it was, I could have, would have, should have. I mean, it was like, it is an extremely rigorous quality control program. That's the problem. So again, that gets back to my friend's comment, the physician that ran Anthem's Science Technology Evaluation Center. Garbage in, garbage out. That doesn't happen just with computers. It also happens with science. And that is what caused one of the major failures in our ability to evaluate cardiovascular risk in the health community today. So many people that knew nothing about all of that rigid quality control for doing CIMTs just went out and did CIMTs and did them very badly. They got them published. And so when you look at the science, it looks like a bunch of garbage. Now we go into detail and spend some time. Todd's not the only group in the world. Cardio risk is not the only group in the world that do very high quality CIMTs. One of them actually is a very respected, I think he might be at Mayo, but I may be wrong, but he's got a couple of articles out there where he says exactly what Todd and I would say in the book and what my friend at the Anthem Science Technology Evaluation Unit said, Ford, it's garbage in, garbage out. If we could just get all of those poorly done CIMT studies and get them out of the way, when you look at the remainder, the guys that knew how to do this, it is excellent studies. <laughs>